If you've been around Windows for a while, you probably know how easy it is to create a shortcut to an application. You can simply open up Explorer, go to the path where you have an executable. Let's just go to one of our folders here and we can find an executable, right click on it and choose to create a shortcut. Now we can do it that way or we could just go to the folder where we want to create a new shortcut. In this case, I'll just use my desktop and we'll right click and we'll choose new shortcut. And then we'll just browse to the location where we have the executable and we can do it that way. It's pretty simple. But with Windows 10, we can also download games and applications that are called universal applications. And these can come from the Microsoft Store. Now, creating a shortcut to these applications don't seem quite as obvious. For example, if I click on Start, You'll see here I have Minecraft installed on my machine. Now, if we right-click on this Minecraft tile and attempt to create a shortcut using any of the options that we've got, well, the option simply doesn't exist. Now, I know time is money, and to save all of your valuable time, I'm going to give you the answer to this first, and then after that, I'm going to show you how to find the path to some of these other universal applications so you can manually create your own shortcuts and that's going to be useful if you want to do something like scripting or perhaps create an icon on your stream deck to load some of these apps. So here's the short version. If you hold down the Windows key on your keyboard and hit R and that's going to bring up the run dialog box here down in the bottom left corner and we type in shell apps folder and hit enter, there's a list of all your apps. Now you could right click on any of these and you could pin them to the start menu. You could pin them to the taskbar, for example, or you could just create a shortcut on the desktop. So let's just use Minecraft as that example because that is one of these apps from the store. And we'll right click, we'll choose to create a shortcut. Now, obviously, it says you can't create a shortcut here. Do you want to do it on the desktop? We'll say yes. Really, that's our only option. We're going to say yes. And, of course, our shortcut appears right here. So now we can launch Minecraft from our desktop, or we could indeed place this shortcut anywhere in our file system, or we could even drag and drop it here onto our taskbar and have it right there. Now, we could even just go and delete the icon from our desktop, the shortcut icon, that is, and this is still going to stay here. All right, so that is the short version. And if that's all you wanted to see, then adios. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. However, stick around if you want to learn a little bit more because if we right-click on this Minecraft shortcut we just created here and choose Properties, you can see that it points to this path here, which probably looks a little confusing. More on that in a moment. So back to basics, if we right click on our desktop and choose new shortcut, we're going to do this the old fashioned way. So we're going to type in the following, which is explorer.exe. Or if you prefer to use environment variables, you can, although in a shortcut like this, this is going to work without them. So it's completely unnecessary for this shortcut method but there is a reason why I'm showing it, so bear with me. So what we could do is we could type something like percent winder percent followed by explorer.exe. And for those of you that don't understand what environment variables are, they're basically just shortcuts for important locations on your PC. So this winder is just a shortcut for wherever you happen to have Windows installed, which is typically on your C drive. Now, the reason why we use these is because when we code things, we just can't assume that everyone installs things in the exact same location. So this variable, in this case, Winder, it's going to point to your installed copy of Windows. So to find out more about these, we can open up a command prompt by hitting start, and we can just type in CMD and hit enter. And in our command window, we can simply type in set and hit enter. And that's going to give us back a list of all of our environment variables for your system. So for me, down the bottom here, window simply points to C colon backslash windows. So when we create our shortcut, it's essentially writing C colon backslash windows slash explorer.exe. 
So when we do our window, my system is simply saying, replace this variable with whatever the actual value is supposed to be. Now, Explorer here is going to launch our application. And that application is this big long path here that we're referring to. But as it stands, Explorer won't be able to understand this and it wouldn't work if I just was to enter this target path after this Explorer in our shortcut. So what we'll need to do is first pass in the shell apps folder just like we did before up here when we got this window here. So let's type that in. So shell colon apps folder and then followed by the name of the app. Okay, so all up, it's going to read window explorer.exe shell with a colon there, apps folder, followed by the name of the app. And don't forget, it also does have this exclamation mark app at the end, which we do need to type in. And if we type it in all correctly, we'll just click next. We'll give it a name. And obviously, it defaults here to Explorer. So I'll just call this Minecraft. And we'll click finish. All right, so that's now placed our shortcut icon on the desktop. And if we double click on it, you can see it correctly launching Minecraft. Now, you can, of course, change this folder icon here, which does look pretty awful. If we just right click on it and choose properties, we've got this little uh, option down the bottom to change our icon. And then you can browse to a location on your computer where you might have other icons stored. Now, by the way, if we go back to the original Minecraft shortcut here, you can see whilst this target path here is rather long and obscure, we can see it all and that's fine. We can certainly type it out if we like. But let's do this again with an app that happens to have a longer path than this window here shows. So let's cancel this and we'll choose Roblox for this example. We'll right click, choose create shortcut on the desktop. And now let's right click on that icon and choose properties. And here you can see that it's got a really long target path and it's longer than this dialog box. So we can't see exactly what the full path even is. So how do we find out what the full path to Roblox in this case is so we can create a shortcut for this if we can't read it? Well, thankfully, that's pretty easy too. So to do that, we'll click Start. We're going to type in Power and we'll choose the Windows PowerShell. And in here, we're going to use a commandlet called Get App X Package. Now, if we run this, just hit Enter right now, you can see it's going to spit out a whole lot of stuff. Most of it you're probably not interested in. Now, we just need to search for Roblox at this stage. So for that, we can run the get app X package again, and we are going to pipe that or send the output of this commandlet into a search clause here where we are going to search for the name property to be something like Roblox. So let's just say R-O-B-L, that should be enough and asterisk, and we'll just close that bracket. And if we hit enter, this time we've returned one single result and that is for Roblox. Now what we're looking for here is the package family name property as this contains the name that's used in the shortcut that we just created. So in order to run this Roblox application from a shortcut or indeed from a command prompt or even this Windows PowerShell prompt, We'll just need to type in explorer.exe followed by our shell apps folder. And now let's just highlight this package family name. So we'll highlight it and we'll hit enter and that's going to copy it to our Windows clipboard. And then I'll right click and that'll just paste that in there. And finally on the end, we're just gonna add our exclamation mark and app. Okay, so it should read explorer.exe shell apps folder followed by the name of whatever's in the package family name variable with exclamation mark uh, app at the end. If we hit enter, you can see that is launching 
Roblox. So it's pretty cool. This full command, you could pretty much use anywhere within Windows. And obviously, in this case, this is the shortcut to Roblox. Now, if it's another app that you want to work with, you can still use this Get App X package commandlet to return the name of the apps you have installed on your system by entering in Get App X package and then selecting the package family name property. And let's just sort those results also by the package family name. And if we hit enter, that's going to give us back a list of all of our installed applications. Now, the reason why I think doing this is the best way and the one that I'd suggest you follow is because sometimes you're going to get obscure apps that are difficult to find the actual app name if you don't know what you're looking for. So let's go back to our window here and let's take this game, State of Decay 2, which I downloaded from the Microsoft Store. So let's right click that. We'll choose to create a shortcut again on our desktop. Now, let's go and take a look at the properties of this one. And here, we'll see in the target field, it's something called Microsoft.Dayton. And it doesn't mention the game's actual name anywhere at all. So if you were reading this, it could be quite confusing if you go and look at Windows PowerShell and it can be really difficult to locate what you're really looking for. So in this case, it doesn't contain the name of the game at all. So if we go to the command prompt and we look for, in this case, an AppX package that has the word Dayton in it. So let's just... Hit our up arrow a couple of times and we'll just type in Dayton. Now this time we can find the actual app name and we're now going to be able to use this in our shortcut. So again, we would type in explorer.exe shell apps folder followed by the name of the target in this case, it is Microsoft Dayton and whatever that says. And if we hit enter, there's our game loading. Well, that's probably a lot to get through and it is quite frankly, but hopefully it's setting you in the right direction. Now there's still a lot more to this conversation. For example, it's entirely possible to run something like Explorer dot exe followed by a shorter name like minecraft and adding a colon on the end and that'll also work but it's only going to work for some applications so if you want to investigate a little bit more we could simply open up the registry editor by clicking start and we can type in reg that's going to find our registry editor so let's open that up we're going to navigate to HKey Local Machine. Let's expand that. We'll expand Software, Classes, Local Settings, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, App Model, Package Repository. And if we expand Packages, in here, you're going to find a long list of entries that detail names of the applications that are installed on your system. For example, let's scroll down and we'll find something like MS Paint, Microsoft Paint. So let's expand this one. And here we have this obscure but rather familiar looking name. So let's just right click this and I'm just going to choose rename and then copy this string here to my clipboard so I don't have to write it out. So to execute MS Paint using this, we'd simply have to come back to a command prompt or PowerShell prompt and type in explorer.exe shell apps folder you can see where this is going slash followed by what we've just got on our clipboard there the ms paint we'll hit enter and there you go microsoft paint loads
Okay, but back to our registry editor, if we also expand this and then expand this Windows protocol, we're going to see the shorter name of MS Paint. Now, if we have this option available, and we only do have this option, by the way, for specific applications, and we can execute Paint, in this case, using this shorter name. And therefore, we can just simply type in explorer.exe MS Paint, and of course, making sure you put the colon on the end. Let's hit enter, and of course, MS Paint loads. Okay, so if we scroll back up and we find that state of emergency game again, now remember I had this obscure title of Dayton. So let's expand that. And if you recall, we can launch the game using this line here that ends in this exclamation mark shipping. So to do that, of course, we'd use the shell folder option, which we just saw up here. Now, alternatively, if we expand a little bit deeper, we've also got this ms-xbl. I'm assuming that's for Xbox Live or something. And this value here. So if we just copy that to our clipboard and go back to our PowerShell prompt and type in explorer.exe, we'll paste that in, add the colon, of course, and we'll hit enter. And there you go, our game again loads. Anyway, look, there's so many ways to do basically the same thing. We've really only touched the tip of the iceberg with this, but go with the first way I showed you by going to our applications folder here. And of course, that again was holding down the Windows key and hitting R and then just launching shell colon apps folder. And that's going to bring you right here because this is definitely the easiest method to follow along. But if you want to get into more of the complex stuff, well, hopefully I've given you a good head start on where to go to look for more information. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for spending your time watching. Subscribe if you like, and we're going to see you back here for some more content. You have a great day.